And we've got to get to this other breaking story. As we speak, the FDA and the CDC has announced that they are now recommending a pause in the use of Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. The move, uh, both agencies saying, is being taken out of an abundance of caution as health officials are investigating safety issues with that shot. We want to get right to NBC's medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar, who joins us now. I, I have to say, this is a pretty stunning development. We're in the midst of a mass vaccination campaign using, among others, this Johnson & Johnson single-dose shot. And now for the FDA to pause it because of potential health concerns. What do you make of it? What have you read in this announcement? Well, Savannah, certainly I don't think I can overstate how serious this development is. You know, we've been following now for a couple of weeks the story from the UK and the concern about these rare clotting events associated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, and we just started hearing reports that a similar situation could be occurring here in the U.S., Savannah with the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And I think it's important to point out a couple of things. One, these are not the typical blood clots that we usually think of in the leg, for example. Those occur, you know, really with a frequency of, of hundreds of thousands per year, but rather these are rarer events. They're termed something called a cerebral venous thrombosis. That's a blood clot in the veins of the brain that are thought to be perhaps triggered by an immune reaction. That's why we're seeing this predominantly um, in younger women. It can also be a associated with a drop in the platelet count. It's so important to point out, Savannah, I really want to reinforce this, that these are very, very rare events, clearly. And we do see, unfortunately, that sometimes this can happen outside of or after the clinical trial. Remember, the clinical trial enrolls you know, tens of thousands of participants. Now we're vaccinating millions of people. And unfortunately, sometimes these rarer events can emerge. Yeah, Anna. and I'm looking actually at what the FDA said here online. They called it extremely rare, echoing what you said. And let's get to the numbers. More than 6.8 million doses of this J&J vaccine have been administered in the U.S. And the, the FDA is reviewing six reported cases of this right. particular blood clot that you've just described. You know, I know somebody in my life personally who just got the vaccine, the J&J, &J, yesterday, a young woman. Yeah. What should anyone be on the lookout for if, if they are concerned about their own health reading a headline like this? So this, the symptoms of a low platelet would be easy bruising, uh, nose bleeding, gum bleeding, for example. Anybody, of course, who develops a significant headache, um, you know, after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, I would certainly alert your doctor to that. It appears that this occurred roughly one week to three weeks post-vaccination. So again, that is in line with what we know that most adverse events do happen relatively quickly, um, you know, after the vaccination. But certainly, Savannah, I can understand why this has anyone who's received the vaccine um, and certainly regulators very, very concerned. You know, I do think it's important to state, of course, that in the vast majority of people, the benefit would far outweigh this risk. The problem is that we don't yet know how to identify somebody who would be at risk other than to say that it appears to occur in younger people and more predominantly in female birth control, things like that could certainly play a part. We just don't know yet. And that is, of course, why the federal authorities are, are uh, issuing this pause briefly, saying it's extremely rare. So we want to keep it in perspective. On the other hand, Dr. Azar, when I think about uh, where this country is right now in the pandemic and the importance of Johnson & Johnson's single dose vaccine in inoculating this country and trying to accomplish herd immunity and trying to get this country back on its feet and reopening again, um, um, and thinking about vaccine skepticism, there are a lot of issues that are raised here. There are. Um, and and I, again, I, I don't think that we can say that this, not, this isn't a significant setback for all the reasons that you mentioned. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine really, really will be, I think it will continue to be a part, uh, a powerful tool in the arsenal. And we're just very, very fortunate that we still have such a good and significant buffer with both of the mRNA vaccines, Savannah. All right, Dr. Azar, thank you very much on this breaking news. We appreciate it. Great story. The reality is there will be a lot of questions now and concern. Yeah, yeah. and we'll continue to follow it. And um, I guess the good news, if there's any, is that it is an extremely rare event yeah. and that they're aware of it and looking into it, but we'll continue to follow it. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.